Let's talk about why we want our lightning rods to be sharp. If I have a, a piece of metal, and that metal has a, a part that is fairly sharp, and a part that is not. Well, I know that it's a metal, so that means the electric field inside of the metal must be zero. Now, if the electric field inside is zero, that means I can move a test charge anywhere I want, and I don't have to fight a field. I don't have to do bare. And so that means everywhere inside that metal and on the surface of the metal is the same voltage. Now, that means the surface of the metal is an equipotential surface. I know that field lines are always perpendicular to an equipotential surface. Okay? Now, the fact that these field lines are perpendicular to the surface is everything. That's the key. Okay? Because here, perpendicular to the surface is pretty darn parallel. But here, perpendicular to the surface causes them to spread out. And it's that spreading out that's key. If I say that metal all has to have the same voltage, let's say relative to some zero point, it's 50 volts, okay? What that means is that relative to some zero point, let's say the voltage is zero right there. If relative to that zero point, that metal is all at 50 volts. That means that if I reach into my pocket and take out a one coulomb, I got to do 50 joules of air to take this coulomb over and put it on the metal. And we learned last time, it doesn't matter which path I take. Now let's think about two possible paths. One possible path is I start here at zero, and I just come in near the, the pointy end. Okay? Now the fact that these spread out means that I've got a strong field and a really, really weak field. Okay? So this is like doing Verk in the British system at their universities. They have no homework. They have no quizzes. You don't have to come to lecture. Everything is based on your final exam. So you can just go and drink all semester long. You can just party, party, and what happens at the end? You pay the piper. You've got to do 50 joules of air to get from there to there. I wasn't doing hardly any work because these field lines were far apart. Now I've got to work like a bugger. That means I'm really fighting a huge electric field. Now if I do it on the American plan, the American plan is you start here, you bring the one coulomb, <laughs> and you clean it up this way. I gotta work, 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 I gotta work. All semester long. Okay? If I have to work all the way up here, I'm not fighting a very strong field. So the field's gonna be very greatest right there by the point. Now, fields are caused by charge. And so that means if the E field is strongest near that point, the charge is clumped near that point. Now you remember last day I had a pinwheel with very sharp points. When I dumped electrons on that pinwheel with the Wimhurst machine, all of a sudden it started hissing and the pinwheel started turning. Well that hissing was electrons being thrown off of the pinwheel by the huge electric field near the point. Okay? That's why we have sharp lightning rods. I'm going to show you a video here. Now, this video, it involves a tobler holtz machine, which is like a Wimhurst machine. It works on a slightly different principle. 
But this thing is gorgeous. It's at the University of Washington. I used to walk past it every week. Um, it's made out of tiger oak. And the front is just a very heavy leaded glass. And etched into that leaded glass is a, a staff with two <coughs> serpents coming up it. And this, of course, is the symbol of dentistry. Okay, this came out of a dental office in 1890, and it creates huge lightning bolts. You can only imagine what they might be using it for in a dental office in 1890. Demonstrate how a lightning rod works. One side, we use this model house and a high voltage electrostatic generator to demonstrate how a lightning rod works. One side of the generator is connected to a metal ball inside the chimney. This sharp rod is also electrically connected to the same side of the generator. The other end of the generator is hooked to this copper sphere, which simulates a charged cloud in the atmosphere. When the generator is cranked with the lightning rod down, large bolts strike the chimney. Or your mouth. When the lightning rod is raised, the bolts stop. Listen. Do you hear the hissing? When the lightning rod is lowered, the large bolts resume. Okay, now. As you have a thunderstorm, the wind, just like rubbing a uh, rubber rod with cat fur, uh, charges it. The wind causes a friction that's going to charge up the ground, charge up the, uh, the clouds, and set up a charge separation. Now, somewhere, somewhere, that is going to spark. Now, the whole point of a lightning rod is not to say, come, come hit my house is to take the charge that's building up on your house and throw it off your house so that your house isn't charged. The reason you have a lightning rod is not so that it will hit your house, but so it will hit your neighbor's house. <laughs> okay, you want to essentially neutralize your house. Now, if you can't get the charge off of your house fast enough, then it still can uh, strike your house, but that gives a second function of the lightning rod. If it does perchance hit your house, the most easy, most natural way for that charge to get to ground is through the lightning rod, which is connected with a great big heavy cable down to ground, okay? But the key is that you have to have that lightning rod very, very sharp so the electric field near it is strong enough to throw charge up into the air and neutralize your house. Now, I have here a little video. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, what we have here is super slow motion picture of lightning. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna pause that. In my textbook, not the one we use for this class, but we use for the conceptual physics class, we claim that lightning cascades from the ground up, that the actual flow of charge uh, happens from the ground up. We put that in the book because one of our colleagues, Dick Rabisco, was an expert on lightning and he claimed that was true. For years and years and years, I thought he was just pulling my leg and that we had something wrong in our book. I felt very bad about that. And then I saw this video, and watch how the, the ionized path is getting set up from the cloud to ground. But once that path touches the ground, watch the cascade. Now, it happened from the ground up. Wow. I was right, not me. <laughs> Okay, so let's dart it back here. It's reaching down for the ground, it's ionizing a path, 
the first path to get fully ionized, that's where it, that's where it blasts. So it's not necessarily the best path, just the first path? Just the first path. Okay. Okay. 